I think it's officially time to destroy this pond. We last left off during a very productive fall at the wildlife pond. Goldfinch were feeding on the different seeds growing along the edge. Insects were abundant and so were their predators. Since then, the pond has endured many months of harsh winter. The water was frozen solid and covered in a few feet of snow but even during these quieter months, there were still signs of activity around the pond. Mice would hang around, likely feeding on the leftover seeds under the snow, and with mice came a couple of their predators as well. I'd find fox tracks every so often coming through, and was also surprised to find an owl print. Okay, there's no tracks around or anything. All there is, there's a tail right there. You can kind of see on the edges here, with my hand, those look like some wingtips, and the pond is right over here. With a little activity happening around the pond, I decided to try to open up a small portion to see if the wildlife would use it during the winter. To keep the water from refreezing, I bought this small birdbath de-icer which was the perfect size considering I wanted to only open up a really small part of the pond. I was kind of skeptical about it at first, but the device actually worked really well, I just ran into some other problems. As you might be able to see from this shot, the de-icer keeps the water from freezing, however the water is stuck under a few inches of ice, which is too far down for small songbirds to drink comfortably at. Another issue is we just get way too much wind and blowing snow in the area that the hole fills up too quickly. So I decided to scrap that idea and move on to the next one. I set up a few perches and found the top of a pine that broke off in the wind. I then set up a few feeders with a heated bird bath as a centerpiece. Now if you're like me, the first time I heard about a heated bird bath, I just pictured a bunch of birds in a steaming jacuzzi. But in reality, these things only get warm enough to keep the water from freezing, so they're actually quite cold. Just as I was finishing up filling the feeders for the first time, I already had my first visitors. Even though this wasn't an ideal setup, like I'd rather have the water come directly from the pond and the food come from plants instead of the feeders, this was an easy way to liven up the area. I was really excited to see some of the goldfinch starting their molt because that's one of the first early signs of spring. And with spring right around the corner, I think it's a good time for me to explain myself and why I'm destroying this little oasis. Well, the main purpose of the original pond was to photograph and film wildlife. The design with the three steep edges and one gradual entrance into the water meant that all the wildlife would enter from the same direction ultimately making it easier for me to film them. However, this also made the design look unnatural, and although I was happy with it at first, later on when I saw just how many animals were using the pond throughout the season, I realized that I made a mistake. See, I built it primarily to fit my photography needs, but I was only using it a few hours here and there, whereas the wildlife was using it 24 seven to drink at, to cool off, and to even breed in. And this made me wonder, if I built an even larger, more wildlife friendly pond, how many more species can I attract? I know I can make an even better habitat for the wildlife, 
so that's why I'll be destroying the current pond and building a new, larger one right behind it. The plan is to make the new pond at least double the size of the old one. I'll angle it so the back end of the pond lines up better with the setting sun. Instead of having steep edges of the pond to funnel birds and wildlife to the back, I'll have gradual edges that lead into a steeper drop off in the middle. This will make it safer for wildlife coming to the edges of the pond to drink or bathe, but it will also give me added depth for fish and frogs to survive in the winter time. I'll then relocate everything that's living in the current pond into the new one and set up a bunch of different habitat features for wildlife both in and around the pond. I'll also dig myself a photo blind to film and enjoy the wildlife more closely. And finally, the last step to leveling up the pond, which I'm very excited about, is backfilling the old pond and removing all the grasses in the area to plant a native wildflower meadow. And this meadow is going to back onto a native tree and native shrub food forest for the birds. All this work will be spread over a few episodes, which I'll continue to release throughout the season. But now that you're all up to speed, I think it's time to start digging the new wildlife pond. It's now early March, and this is when I decided to start working on the new pond. The first thing I wanted to do was dig out all the snow in the area where I'll be making the pond. By getting down to the grass, the ground should thaw out quicker and I could start digging the pond about a week earlier. My goal is to have everything finished by May 1st so I can enjoy the peak songbird migration and hopefully get some interesting species passing through at the pond. Looks like the ground is soft enough that I can start digging. first step is going to be to remove the top layer of grass this whole area. Day two, and this is where we left off yesterday afternoon. I basically finished the entire deep end. So at its deepest here, it's about four feet. Goes into a little bank over here that's about two, two and a half feet, and then goes up to a spot that's about a foot. So all I have left to do before putting in the liner is to use a straight shovel, and I'm gonna create a nice gradient with all these edges that basically slope up towards the edges of the pond. Honestly, so far things have been going really well. Just to get to this point, I thought it would have taken me two full days. I finished all this in one day, so now all I have left to do is that grading and then I should be able to bring in the liner today. I'm probably overlooking something really obvious and I'll run into problems at some point, but for now it, I can't think of it. I'm not an expert at this, so uh, honestly there's definitely some mistakes that I'm probably making, but that's the fun of it. We started off by adding a few sheets of underlayment to protect the pond liner from any punctures underneath. And then setting up the actual pond liner was a little bit tricky, specifically around the deep end. I think there's a special way to fold it so it sits properly. I tried my best to do it and I think I did okay. Not great, but luckily the whole thing will be covered in sand and should hide any of those imperfections. Nobody will know except for well, all of you guys. But speaking of sand, I originally wanted to fill the whole pond with sand first and then add the water later on. However, the pipes running to the old pond were still frozen, so we had to fill these large barrels with water and transport them to the new pond. And as we dumped them out, the water would wash away any sand into the deep end, so I decided I'll just add all the sand afterwards to make it easier. I also lined the deep end with rocks, and this should stop any sand along the banks from washing away into the deep end over time. I then cleared the leftover sod along the banks and started covering up any of the extra pond liner, one thing that I didn't show is I did eventually come back in and trim the extra liner just to make everything neat and tidy.
Here's what the new pond looks like so far from overhead. If you were a bird flying over, you can see just how much more visible the new pond is. When you're at ground level, you can see that by not having those raised edges, the new pond just looks way more natural. And another benefit to the new design is that when I'd be filming wildlife at the old pond, I could really only shoot from one direction if I didn't want to show any liner in the photos or the videos. At the new pond, I don't have that problem. I can film them no matter where they're positioned and it should always look natural. Wow, it's been alive this morning. Back here in these further pines, there's been a pair of Merlin, probably the same ones that were here nesting last year, calling out and chasing each other. So hopefully they nest there again. Then in these closer pines, there's been a screech owl the past few days calling. So I want to find it, but I also want to just let it be and hopefully it nests somewhere in one of those larger pines. Maybe there's a couple cavities there. Tree swallows have come in, uh, bluebirds have come in. So although I'm ahead of schedule and I didn't think I'd get to this point this quickly, I still kind of feel the pressure to get nest boxes up and all the rest of the wildlife habitat that I want to get up. But that'll be for another day. For today, what I wanted to do, first of all, was in here, I'm in the blind. Um, I wanted to put a roof in, but I realized I don't really have the right size piece for this. So I just draped over some of this camo netting and I'll skip that for today. And what I want to do is get to that pond and fill it up. The first thing that I wanted to do was salvage any plants from the old pond that I wanted to keep and transplant them into the new pond. The first was the cattails. I didn't even plant these here, they just showed up. They're great at multiplying and should absorb nutrients to keep algae levels down. If I do get algae, it will likely be in the first season since a lot of the plants haven't established yet. Next up was two pots of bulrushes I put in. The mass of roots in these pots was incredible, especially after only one growing season. I then added the willow cuttings because they're also very effective at absorbing nutrients. I'm only putting them in here temporarily until I can replace them with other plants in a couple of weeks. So I got all the plants that I wanted out of this pond and into the new one. What I'll do now is take all this water and add it to the pond, hopefully bringing in some beneficial bacteria and any aquatic invertebrates. And then what I'll do is I'll remove all this sand and whatever debris is left over and I'll place it in one of the corners of the pond, not inside, but just next to it. Just so if there's anything left over, any insects, they can actually crawl out and go into the new pond. And then after that, I think it's officially time to destroy this pond. Stay tuned for the next episode where I set up all the wildlife habitat and begin planting and seeding around the pond.